Hey guys, uh, this is Akshisura. Uh, today we will be looking at how to set up your local environment um, for Psycho Commerce 9 uh, development. And it's really not that difficult. Um, so essentially you get the SDK solution, so we'll be just looking at that uh, for today and how you would set that up, how we'd run it, how you would uh, debug it. Uh, and then we would take it from that part uh, and then see how we actually run the solution. Um, so you kind of get an idea of what you basically need in order to get started. Uh, remember that um, when you're debugging uh, a Setcore Commerce engine solution, so there's two, right? So you have Setcore Commerce engine which runs with the dotnet core um, based uh, apps for uh, sitecore commerce and then there's a sitecore commerce website related uh, uh, tweaks you do which are mainly they could be sxa they could be just plain old mbc but those don't um, deal with the engine directly right so there's two here we are talking about how to set up your local environment, work with the engine, work with the .NET Core stuff, how to debug it. So just putting that in perspective, even though we have um, the site set up for the authoring, um, DevOps, uh, minions and stuff in, in uh, IIS, we have them as uh, non-managed code, which is fine. Um, but in order for us to simulate that, so essentially, if you remember uh, the regular ASP.NET apps, it, it kind of uh, emulates an IIS Express locally, or you could attach to the W3P process, right? In this case, because they're all um, .NET Core apps, what you do is you use a web server called as Kestrel. Um, Kestrel is um, a web server. Um, it, it's not IS, but it's a it's a web server, which is predominantly used in um, ASP.NET Core or .NET Core projects, where you can attach to um, a specific port and listen to it, and you have a command line interface, uh, and you can uh, run these. Uh, but what that also means is that, say, for instance, you're running on port 5000 for authoring. Uh, you can't debug it on port 5000. You would have to stop your IIS site so that it's not uh, conflicting on that port. Then you can run your debugger in your Visual Studio and then you'll be able to do that. But once you do that, uh, you want to be able to take uh, the code you have deployed back into uh, the, wherever your uh, apps are set up for commerce and then restart your uh, site so that the, the regular process works. So this is mainly for debugging purposes. All right, so uh, first we need to start off by setting up um, SSL for Kestrel. Um, why that is is that by default when you install Commerce, all connections are HTTPS, the um, authentication between the core, the commerce engine, and, and they all they all use the client certificates. It's all set up in IIS, um, so the encryption and decryption is handled by IIS, which is great. But because we want to be able to debug and use the solution, and because the solution uh, runs against the Kestrel, server we, we should set up the ssl for kestrel yeah, so in order to make maintain the the ssl and it needs to use the same client certs as the rest of the guys in is so that's what we'll be trying to do right now the first thing and then we'll move on okay first let's um locate the w root folder under the engine uh, set code commerce start engine locate the config.json, um, open the file up. So here uh, you will notice a whole bunch of stuff, but the main thing we're worried about is uh, use HTTPS in Kestrel is true. SSL port is 5000, which is the same. We are uh, seeing the SSL, uh, the PFX file path, 
and then the password. So now uh, we need to do some magic to get that set up here so we can run the um, run the source in debug mode. So um, what we're trying to do is to export um, the certificate for our setup. Um, so we'll be exporting it and then we'll put it in the engine, uh, commerce engine project in the WWW root folder. So when we launch it via Kestrel, it can use that cert and then uh, not have any issues. It, it all needs to be similar to when we have it in IS. Um, so the first thing we need to do um, is to export it, obviously. So in order for us to do that, we need obviously have it protected by a password, uh, which is Sitecore, as you can see in the config JSON. Now, following that, we need to uh, get the thumbprint of the certificate uh, we want to export. Now. Um, the let me copy this command for you guys. So essentially, we're trying to get the root cert uh, uh, for uh, what setup inside Core as part of your commerce install. So that'll take care of that that part. Um, and then essentially, we copy this. Let me create, get the next command ready. And what we will do is we will uh, i guess i could just export it so i am going to essentially uh, use the thumbprint and export that certificate as a pfx file put it in the um, c drive with that password protected of um, site core let's do that and that's that's done so that helps so we took that uh, PFX, which was created, dumped it inside of the www.root uh, folder. Uh, yep, I think that should take care of that part. Um, so the next part is we need to configure the client certificates, uh, which we'll do next after this, uh, and then uh, we'll get on to the next step. Uh, so the next thing we do is uh, we go to the authoring instance, www.root, Let's open the um, config.json in here. And essentially what we are looking for is the thumbprint. Yep, there you go. I really like formatted ones, but anyways. So we need to find uh, the thumbprint, which is specific to our install, right? And we can predict what your thumbprint is going to be. So you copy that. You go back to your config.json, which was part of your um, solutions, uh, site core engine, stuff, 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 uh, root config. You replace the thumbprint here. So now um, the thumb, both the thumbprints match uh, between IIS as well as what you'll be sending it through Kestrel. So this takes care of it. Make sure you save it. And that finishes uh, our next section. Okay, next, um, I went ahead and stopped the commerce authoring uh, instance in IIS. So this way, uh, there won't be any conflicts. We will get back uh, to our Visual Studio and then um, try to debug uh, or run our Sitecore engine. Uh, so we're back to our Visual Studio. Make sure that the commerce engine is uh, selected as a default project. In here, uh, make sure it's set to engine. Uh, and once this is done and taken care of, um, you go ahead and hit one. And essentially, it's going to go through. Uh, I haven't really made many modifications to this. It is going to launch, and we should see uh, it come up. Um, so you could also run it as an IS Express, funny enough, but um, this is the recommended way. As you can see, it's running through a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just going to allow access. All right. So at this point, um, I'm not going to see any errors, hopefully, but uh, it will run through.
just gonna give it a couple of seconds. It's already up and running, by the way. It's just trying to run some tests. So I'm just going to wait. So as you see, um, I'm trying to load the, the site up at this moment. You see requests coming through um, and our uh, code, which is currently running the engine, is taking the request. It's actually processing uh, the requests in the background. If you've ever used publishing service, uh, this is something similar where if you launch it in the console mode, you could see all the output coming through. So I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes until this loads and I'll, I'll uh, unpause it afterwards. Yeah. Um, as you can see, our storefront came up. So one of the biggest tests is that if our uh, storefront came up with uh, uh, the catalog items, as you know, the catalog, uh, all the commerce stuff sits in a separate database. It, gets put into Sitecore as virtual items almost. They're not really items. But if those didn't exist, if that connection didn't exist and it didn't work properly, we wouldn't um, have these categories displaying or even products for that matter. But as you can see, as I'm loading this, the, the calls uh, to the service are being made. Um, so each time I interact with it, there's a lot of um, communication going back and forth. Um, between the actual website and the engine. And we will you know, later on get into how to customize it and stuff. But at this point, I just wanted to show you how to set up your local dev um, environment with the sample SDK solution in order for us to start running it, start testing it. So let's, uh, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to really cover. I uh, hope um, that helps you because uh, it was definitely something I had to figure out and ask people for when uh, I got started. But once you get into it, um, things start making sense. Um, and again, um, definitely sign on to like Stack Exchange. Very, very useful. There's a ton of items, uh, questions available there. People constantly looking at it. Um, another great resource, as you know, is the uh, Sitecore um, community Slack, amazing resource. Half the help I get is from the Slack e-commerce uh, uh, e-commerce channel. So go ahead and do it. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, we will be doing um, a bunch of other uh, videos on how you know you can get started with commerce and do the um, development. All right, have a good week.